brought Jack downtown today. It's your second time down, is it? Yeah, second time down. And we're going to a different part of town today. Down to Tesco's roundabout. There's you know a few different ways we can come into town. That's a lovely ratley thing there, we've just gone past him. It's a shame in some ways that being in the car you can't always hear the noise of things as they go past, but you know, you can certainly see them and you can tell by his feet the way he's still just trotting along. He's not gathered speed, he's not spooked by it at all. And the lovely thing about taking him downtown is there's always plenty for them to see, not just in terms of traffic, but also people on the side. And you might say, well, he's going off to do driving trials competition, so wherever's the point in taking him into town? Well, it all applies. You know, it doesn't matter what your horse is going to be doing. The fact is you still want him to go out and see as much as possible and the time to do that is when you're training him. So you get spectators, you know, like this man standing here with the uh, bag on the side of the road. dustbin day today as well. So you've got them on the side of the road to look out for. And all things, obviously, in a driving trials event in this pony, he's got the potential to go on and be world class, he's, he's a cracking little pony. So obviously you get a lot of spectators around the obstacles, so he needs to be able to concentrate on his job, which is what the driver's telling him to do, in terms of speed up, slow down, go left, go right, you know, everything else, go in the water, go over the bridge, whatever you're asking him to do in that hazard, but to not pay attention to anything that's going on around him, or at least to not be phased by it, so hence taking him downtown, He's obviously got to be directed around roundabouts and at traffic lights and things like that. And he might have like these banners on the side of the fence here. He might have the markings on the road. Sometimes he might have people there. Sometimes he might not. We so have them obstacles in banners yeah, exactly. Time. So you know, it may not be in the middle of a field at a driving trials event. But if he'll come down a busy town. And like here he's got traffic coming up his inside, a little motorbike there, he's got to stand still at the lights. There's nothing in front of him, so if he did spook, I mean it wouldn't matter if he if he spooked, he'd run straight into the car in front of him, but even if he didn't, you know, you can see there's all the traffic coming around, lorries coming around in front of him as well, like this one. So if he was upset by any noise behind him or anything like that, he'd obviously be diving forward straight into the road which wouldn't be good so the fact that he'll come down here and behave perfectly well and he's still only being driven on a soft piece of rubber and we've still got him in this two-wheeled carriage so he hasn't pulled a great big heavy carriage downtown and been tired he's still nice and fresh he'll walk when he's told he'll trot when he's told he'll even get up to a canter if he's told so he's still got bags of energy to do the work. So you can see there he's waiting on the inside of the roundabout, back up to a trot when he's told. Got lots of lorries, you can see. That one pulling out in front of him. nice and responsive as well, you know, if you tell him to stand, he'll go straight from a, a stand into a trot. He's definitely got plenty of impulsion. a lorry but it's all the way over there. <laughs> I'm sure people think we're mad, you know, all the lorry drivers, of course, everybody's told please pass wide and slow, so they see us coming and they slow down and they try and get right over the other side of the road and there we are trying to get as close as we possibly can. <laughs> so, I 
But that's exactly what we want, because if you do ever have a lorry coming past you, you know, they come round a blind bend, I think on one of our films when we're going down Stockbridge, funnily enough, exactly that happens. You come round a blind bend, the lorry, you know, obviously doing sort of 50 miles an hour, and uh, doing about 50 miles an hour. And as he comes round the bend, there we are with the horse. So he's either got to slam on his air brakes, in which case the horse has got to be used to them, or he's just got to keep going, where you get the noise of the lorry, you know, the bounce and rattle of the lorry bed. We think it's best that the horses are trained to cope with that, rather than relying on, you know, asking other people to stop or to slow down, because very often, you know, you're always going to get that situation. Sometimes you ask someone to slow down, and either out of ignorance or because they didn't see you, they don't, you know, follow the instructions that you've given them. So, in that case, at least you know that your horse isn't going to panic if the lorry does go past at some speed, or whatever it happens to be, you know, a car driver driving past trying to overtake. You can't control everybody's actions out on the roads. And we had an email from somebody not so long ago who asked if we'd do a video about etiquette on the roads, so how drivers of cars and other motorised vehicles should respond to horses and uh, I prefer or we prefer to worry about training the horses and how our horses behave well, on the courteous. road. courteous. Yeah. Yeah, so the horse drivers are courteous. So we always say please and thank you and we think it's our duty to ensure that our horses aren't frightened when you go out on the roads. And if your horse isn't frightened, so by that you blend in with the traffic as much as possible so they can come past you, you know, you don't hold them up, you're not constantly saying, oh stop here, stop here because my horse is frightened or anything else like that. So it is. Well, you know, the etiquette of the road the lady asked for, the etiquette I think we should have mm. is have horses trained sensible and safely to be driven on the road to blend in with the traffic mm. and not be a nuisance to the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. It's all very well saying go wide and slow. If the horses are traced properly, they'll cope with anything, as our videos prove. You know what I mean? Like this is a prime example here. Yeah. So they're working on the roadworks today, you've got the that JCB working over there, all of this lot just there. Now the noise of that, it may not be directly next to the pony, but in some ways that can be more frightening because they can hear the noise behind them, they've got their blinkers on, they don't know what it is. You don't want your horse speaking because he's heard something in a field. So it's like when we came to the roundabout with that gentleman on the mower. Well, if he's got his ear defenders on, he maybe couldn't hear or wouldn't even assume that there would be a horse coming up the road. So, you know, you can't always signal to someone like that to stop and turn their engine off and, you know, so you can lead your horse past in case he gets frightened. You know, that's, that's not fair on the person who's operating the, the mower. So, rather than meet something like that and then cause a, a hazard on the road by having to get your groom down to his head and having your pony try and swing around in the middle of the road or he won't stand still or he's rearing up or messing around because he's you know upset by the mower you know especially if the guy who's driving it hasn't seen you and doesn't know you're there you cause more of a problem having a horse that isn't used to things like that whereas we think it's better that you train your horses to cope with things so that when you do take him downtown, if the guy stops and turns off his engine, then lovely, no problem, he'll go past. But if he doesn't stop and he doesn't turn off his engine and he's still cutting grass, as you saw there, the pony will still go straight past it. And going back to that, the, the video we were asked to, you know, about etiquette on the roads, you cannot expect to control every other road user's actions. So yes, you can say, okay, you should pass wide and slow because horses are unpredictable. Well, you're gonna get some people who know that and who still choose to come past you at 90 miles an hour, beeping their horn because they think it's funny or, you know, they want to upset the horse or even we've had it, people, it? yeah, they, they misjudge the getting in front of the horse. They think they've got enough room to overtake and they don't judge the speed of the horse right in the oncoming traffic. So they have to cut under the horse's head. And we've had it here, people know us around here, so sometimes they'll drive their car along and to get our attention they'll be born. 
Um, you know, they don't mean anything by it. They don't mean to upset the horse, but they're just beeping the horn, waving out there, hi, how are you, that sort of thing. So, you know, it'd be no good if your horse took up off the road just because somebody beeped a horn. So that's why we bring them out in traffic and why we train horses to be safe, confident and happy in any sphere of harness work. Big old lovely lorry coming past here. Just let the air brakes off. See if you watch Jack's feet there. He didn't speed up. Just jig jogging along. Things should not be, in our opinion, just about putting the horse in the carriage, or if you're going to put it in the carriage, it's your responsibility as the driver to keep that horse safe, to make sure the horse is happy with what he's doing. Now, if he's going to go down the road and be frightened by a dustbin, or be frightened by a lorry, or be frightened by a car driving through a puddle, or even going around a field and be frightened by a pheasant jumping out the hedge. He doesn't like the shafts on his side or, you know, he's not quite happy with the noise of the carriage behind him. That's no good. The horse hasn't been trained properly. And if he hasn't been trained properly, you've certainly got no right taking him out on the public highway where he's going to be a danger to himself and to the driver and to other road users. And country lanes, out, you might be lucky enough to live right out in the middle of a forest somewhere you know, they still have tractors going around there, they still have Land Rovers, things like that. You might get some teenage kids coming by on their little motorbikes. Well, you know, you might drive over a branch and have it crack and that could startle the horse. Well, again, all those things a horse should be used to. Just taking him into some woods. Around the trees. there that puddle in front of us I don't know if the camera angle will pick it up but the reflection mm. see the reflection of the tree above in the puddle so it's, it's not puddle. raining today it's a bit like a mirror like us yeah, a a yeah. so you can see it's not raining today and what we're doing is just asking Jack to go in the puddle so you can see there he's just done just to show that it's not the fact that obviously there was water all around him the other day when we took him out He'll still go through a puddle that's just laid on the side of a road, even on a nice dry day. See that reflection there? That's exactly what we're talking about. It can sometimes frighten a horse. We've got this manhole cover. See, he's just gone straight over that. A number of times we hear from people who say, oh, my horse won't go over them, he doesn't know. I mean, obviously, in a lot of cases, they can slip which is why they don't like going over them. But at the same time, it's no good if he shied out in the middle of the road to avoid going around the manhole and crashed into an oncoming car. That wouldn't be any good. So there's definitely times when you've got to put your horse over one. Or under one. Or, yeah, because it's in his best interest to do so. Yeah, you see? Grown. Grown, it? Just come it's galloping with the little sheep as well, right up to the corner of the field. not upset Jack at all. So we just let him off. Just walking out of the yard. Nice and sensible. Jack straight into the field today. Just to show you that he'll work quite happily in a wide open space on a grass surface. Obviously if he's going into competition This is the sort of thing I'll be doing. Going through a bit of long grass there. Yeah. 
Standing still. And this is obviously coming back towards home now. And he loves his work, this little chap. Standing still again now. And Fletcher's going to take him up into a canter. And bring him back to a standstill. And as you can see, that there, that's the gate. So you can see there, Jack just walking on the grass on a nice slap rain. Yeah, it's good to know if he's going to be going off to do driving trials. You want to be able to take him on a variety of surfaces and know that he'll behave himself just as well on a bit of grass as he will on the road. There's see if that's just standing him still. Facing home. And bring him up to a trot and then a canter. And a nice slack rain you can see. And ask him to stop. Slippy this morning. And there we go, standing still again on a nice slight rain. He's just put his leg at rest there, if you can see. OK, Fletch, walk him on. So, that's the entrance to our yard over there. Like this, that these old cattle are there, and yeah. you don't take no notice.
What do you think of him? Absolutely spot on, isn't he?